Cool. Thanks for joining. Okay, uh, I'll get started. Uh, hi everyone, thanks for joining this uh, month's uh, developer meeting. For these new faces here, this is something we do second Thursday of each month. And it is very discussion based. So anything uh, you want to discuss, as long as it's related to the development of Gem 5, uh, please jump in, make comments, suggestions. A lot of stuff I'm going to discuss today is, is not us patting ourselves on the back and saying how great we are. It is, we are doing this, what can we do to make it better? Or are we doing the right thing? And what do we need to do? Uh, so this is kind of opportunity for people who develop Gem 5 uh, to share ideas and get the direction of the project we want. Uh, we don't have to use the full hour. We just go on for as long as we like and stop when no one else has anything to say. Uh, I prepared some slides that have some talking points, at least I'm interested in, but there's going to be ample time at the end of my presentation to prep anything you want. And again, please feel free to kind of interrupt me during this presentation to pick on something maybe I brushed on that you want to discuss uh, or anything like that. It's, it's, pretty, it's, pretty, it's a pretty open meeting. And these are these meetings are uh, recorded and put on YouTube uh, normally, with, normally, normally within a few days after this is done. So there's an archive as well. Uh, Bobby, one one quick question, just for sure. just for the scope. So I'm, I guess I would fall into more the user and trying to extend the Gem Five system. Is that within uh, all, scope? All, 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 scope? Is, all I'll say is you can you you're, anyone's free to sit in this meeting, but we're not here to help you use Gem Five in this meeting. We're not like a support uh, group. We are here to actually discuss development affairs. Uh, you we can uh, there's resources online. That's the mailing list and the Gem Five. GitHub discussions pages that can be used to ask uh, sorts of questions and how to use Gem5 a certain way. Yeah, I, I didn't mean uh, user questions. What I meant is some suggestions for. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. Like the thing is, Gem5 developers are and Gem5 users are there's there's a lot of overlap there, and, and we also want feed yeah feedback from users on how to develop the features they need can also be helpful. Uh, so yes, please try maybe save. Well, for for what I I'm gonna actually ask something about the stats coming up that would be used to be like how how do you want stats to be so yeah your inputs uh, needed so the Jennifer today is going to go briefly over the current status of Gem Five and go over a few I think one or two things that are lingering or we should be aware of uh, I'm going to talk about the upcoming Gem Five Twenty Four release uh, mostly asking people what they want out of this release and whether there's anything we need to prioritize that we aren't already aware of. I'm going to talk about the Gen 5 stats and my own sort of um, wrapper on it called Pi Stats, and also uh, discuss maybe what we want from this from the Gen 5 stats output going forward. Mm -hmm. And then open the floor for other items, uh, completely anything you want Gen 5 related uh, that you want to discuss is at least related to development of Gen 5. Uh, so, uh, uh, current status of Gen 5, uh, I was almost panicking because this morning one of our daily tests kind of failed and we managed to get it passing again. But this could have, could have made these slides last night. But I was going to say, very happy that we've had kind of consistent daily tests and weekly tests and compiler tests passing. Uh, there was a time when I think we were quite bad, we were quite bad at letting failing tests kind of sit there for a while. But I think we've got this down to like one or two days we normally have them fixed. And uh, the test seems to really prevent a lot of, uh, bad code getting getting in as well. So Gen 5 development, it seems to be pretty good. We're testing more and the tests are passing more regularly and they're catching, I think, more things. They're also, yeah, they're they're helping us create our code base. Uh, just kind of basically the last month, uh, had a pretty, I would say average months in terms of like the number of commits, uh, just kind of roughly we have a thousand commits a year. So this is kind of on track for that. Uh, but it's always nice to see we're we're merging more merging and closing more issues and pull requests than we're opening because uh, I think normally that's not the case. Normally it's the other way around. So we're keeping on top of things here. I think we're getting much better at managing the project and getting things in and not letting things hang around for too long. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty good. Um, I was looking through the PRs and there's only one I wanted to bring up that's still in discussion that I thought might be worth bringing up in this meeting. Uh, I suppose my comment here is uh, I think Jacko took this over for a couple of days and I'm a little bit unclear about who like 
who is is anyone reading this now? Is anyone trying to get this in? Uh, is there any blockers? Uh, don't have anything to say on that. So I actually wanted to bring that up myself, but so thanks okay. actually for anticipating it. So I'm still taking ownership. I just posted uh, um, like a um, last draft of uh, uh, the Clang format, and I'm just waiting for basically feedback from other people for someone to actually review. I think I have addressed most of the points. Uh, okay. What I actually wanted to discuss in today's meeting is because this will actually uh, change uh, lots of the uh, big parts of the code. Uh, I was wondering whether there were like some big changes, big PR that maybe had a uh, priority over that one. Uh, because if not, then we might. Um... I think I think this is a good time to get in. Actually, I don't think mm -hmm. we've got. I can't think of any big things that are taking precedent. This is so. There is only, uh, you're probably right from what I can see from the pull, from mm -hmm. the set of pull requests. Uh, the only exception would be the FDP pull request, which has been sitting there for a while and touches a lot of the CPU code. So that would mm -hmm. be like a double exception. I, I, I would still think we should get it in now rather than later. Uh, first of all, I definitely don't want this to lapse over another uh, release, which I think is possible if we leave this longer. Uh, I think realistically, there's always going to be one or two things that are going to have a painful merge or whatever. But I, I'm not sure this is. If I assume this is all incorporated into the pre-commit, right? In your in your in your implementation. Uh, yeah, I basically just took it from you and just made some uh, amendments uh, to address some of the Andreas points. Yeah, I I haven't played with this at all, but it is someone locally who suddenly discovers that they need to do this, can they just do like run the pre-commit on the code and automatically format it immediately? Is that is it as easy as that? Uh yeah. Yeah, okay. In which case I yeah. think I'm free. It might be worth um if if it's on the top of your mind, Giacomo, it would be helpful to have like a paragraph or two of documentation of like if you have an outstanding PR, run this line to reformat yours before you do a rebase or before you do a merge or whatever it is. Um, if that's something easy to document, I think that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. and uh, can... I'd, I'd, I'd really like to see this change get in. I'm definitely on the move faster on this uh, camp. Uh, and I'll, I guess I'll look through your changes and I'll, I'll give my thumbs up later today. Uh, so yeah, that was something that I was very gra I was grateful you took this up and started working on it because yeah, I think we should get this in sooner. Does anyone, does anyone have anything else to talk about clan format? Uh, we have talked about this in other meetings. No? Okay, I just wanted to get it out there. Um, so next my thing is upcoming version 24 uh, release of Gen 5. And uh, basically, we at UC Davis, who are normally ones who decide this pretty much, is we've kind of settled on June 1st and giving our staging brand policy, the staging brand must be created about two weeks before the release. That would mean we will be create a staging branch in the middle of May, just giving us over a month of development time, pretty much, to get stuff in. And uh, just this is this is actually motivated by uh, the bootcamp we're doing in the summer. We really want to build the bootcamp materials using version 24. And uh so having 1.5 months to comfortably comfortably develop these materials on on this release seems like a pretty good uh, schedule. Um so my this the, the upcoming things are first of all I'll go through what I think we at the uh, we at UC Davis are focusing on. I, I'm not sure if I missed out some stuff here, but these are the big things that came into my head. Uh, improving the stats, objects returned. Where I'm working on this, uh, I think I talked about this last time, but uh, exit events are very primitive right now. They return basically an annotation. And I'm having them return objects that contain richer information uh, about the exits that happened and the data that that exit that, that is relevant to the exit. Uh, I think we'll get in the better support for multiprocessing. So that's having a, it's still not like, we have this very grand vision for multiprocessing that is going to really improve when we'll use experiments. But right now, JC working on some tooling that allow people to at least run many versions of Gen 5 from a single script. So you can say like, here's my system. I want to run 
12 instances of this for these 12 different CPUs, but everything else is the same. And you just can define that in one script and hit play and it'll throw up X many threads, one for, well, it depends how many threads you have on your system to spare. Uh, hopefully this will become clearer when we submit the code. I believe Herschel is pretty close to finishing that up. Uh, somewhat related because it's more Gen5 resources, but these things are in sync, more disk images. And this is also related to exit events because we want to put these new exit event types in the disk images. So they return more bit true information. Um, so that's, I think that's like a fairly solid month's amount of work for us at UC Davis, uh, I suppose. And one other thing that actually came up earlier this week, I realized is uh, we have this on our item list test to like test the support for 2404. And the reason for that is 2404 is released at the end of this month. So I'm going to push that this needs to be in for version 24. Um, like people are going to be using 2404 uh, in that issue, they are highlight exactly what I mean by support, but it's like every way to really think about it. Gem 5 should run a 2404 system. Gem 5 should be able to simulate a 2404 system. Gem 5 should be able to use SE mode in 2404 with a binary that was compiled to 2404, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's a little back and forth there. I only, I only uh, sound slightly more panicky than uh, some people think I should, but I remember when we, 2204 came out, we just encountered these horrible bugs with new syscalls and some other things that were very, very hard to diagnose and fix. So I really want to get the ground running on that. Uh, I suspect since I am the most enthusiastic about this, this will be my job. But in that uh, issue, I have highlighted the list of steps I think need to be done to say that we, say we support 2404. Or worst case, at least know in what, in what way we don't support it. But uh, I'm definitely going to push for that. So that's what I kind of have on my plate and my ideas. Uh, I suppose just I'm really I'm asking like sincerely, like who else is working on something that is realistic to get done in the next month, even with a little bit of help from us, like a little bit of support, uh, and thinks we val think you'd be valuable to put in the next release of Gen 5. Like we will prioritize things that we think are sensible to get in and and are reasonable expectations to get in. Hey, this is Satria from Barcelona Supercomputing Center. So we recently opened an issue on um, this five vector uh, agnostic versus undisturbed. And this is something we want to push because the current policy, which is undisturbed in conjunction with the out of order model is, is, is very, it, it yields very bad results in terms of performance. So we're pushing to implement the, the agnostic uh both tail and mask agnostic okay um, and you think vector. and you think you can get that done within the next well month and push i think so a... i think it's it's doable so this is something that if if we work on this is the main thing that we can provide before the well the, if you need anything the... from us uh let us know uh, yeah so we we'll have the it. issue open we've been looking at the code we're already implementing so we will keep you posted Okay, great. Um, I would say if no, if you don't, if anyone doesn't want to speak up in this in this meeting, uh, or isn't here and wants to talk and are just watching this on the uh, recording, uh, even if you just say on your issue or PR, I would like to get this in for twenty four oh four. Like this is for some reason it's needed for you, uh, or there's good justification. Then please let us know. Uh, we do tend to prioritize things, especially nearer the staging branch time, to really get the stuff in that uh, we promise we get in. Um, so yeah, 24 hours coming. Yeah. Um, I think in uh, GitHub, we can create a milestone for like V24.0 and we can tag the issues and PRs for that milestone and automatically keep track of what is still needing to be done. Okay. Uh, I, I've never used this before, but, uh, it sounds great if it's as you describe. So, um, yeah, if anyone, in, well. Sounds like you want to do it, Jason, if you want to set up a milestone. Sure. Target things. Okay. Um, Done. Okay. GitHub get, get is sometimes ridiculously easy. Okay. Um, so that's all I had in 2404. Feel free to jump in again at the end if something comes in your mind. Again, this is a very free-form meeting. Uh, I'm going to talk about now is what I call pi stats. Um, so really, um, I, I the pi stats is something I worked on 
two, three years ago, geez. And uh, uh, not buy stats, pie stats. And basically my thought process here was, isn't getting the stats you need out of Gem5 horrible? It just seems like everyone I know dumps the stats to a text file and opens a text file and does, and does control F to get what they want. Or through some other means, it doesn't seem to be very structured or efficient. So I thought, well, how about we at least output it as a JSON file of the of the text stats, like what the text stacks representation is, just make that into a JSON format. Uh, but it was not widely used as far as I know. I kind of told people about this, I told them how to use it. No one seemed that interested. But I have been working to it recently. So this is, I've removed some of the complexity here, but this is kind of what I went for with version 21.0. Like this is what the, obviously the actual number of stats is significantly more than this, but it would just be a JSON file like this has a structure that is similar or, or exactly what your uh, Gen5 uh, sim object tree is. You'd go from system down to CPU, the first CPU, uh, you want the uh, start num, the num instructions executed and you get its value and you also have other information there like the description of the statistic, the unit, the data type, etc. cetera. Um, and I have been improving that, having had handled improvements, uh, I guess I'm about to ask you like, well, I'll go, sorry, I'll talk this first. And also I'm not just, you can notice output as a JSON, you can also access this JSON information in Python. So you can process your stats inside your configuration script. I think easier than you could before, but that's, I guess, debatable. Uh, so my idea here was you'd have just basically you get some stat from your root or any sim object in your system. You'd have this kind of uh, tree, tree like representation and you could do sim stat or system, the CPU, the first CPU, number of instructions executed. And uh, there's various ways to do it that I've showed here. You know, you can use this um, dictionary sort of uh, format. Or, and also uh, one of the limitations in the text file that people noted and was a limitation in the JSON file until some changes that it recently was that uh, you had basically vectors or arrays or lists of sim objects that were the same, like uh, an array of CPUs, for example, is very common. And the way you access them was by just doing system.cpu0, like literally the string cpu0 dot num instructions executed. So I have worked more into making that a proper vector of CPU objects. And uh, and it's, it's, there's a draft PR here. I, I'm not asking people to really look at it, but just to say that this is kind of the PR where I'm putting all these changes. And I suppose I really reached a point in this where I don't really know how to make it better, but I know it's not what people want. <laughs> I know people want to want the stats to be better. I know people want to do things with statistics that are better. And I don't really know what that is. So I want to at least, and again, I, if you don't have any good ideas, if you don't have any ideas, that's fine. I can I can ask other people or look around or whatever, but um, does anyone have anything that comes to mind? Like, what do you need from the statistics that you maybe don't get now? And what would make parsing and using this, uh, what would make parsing or using the stats output or the stats and scripts easier? I suppose my third thing would be here, like, what does the text file get you that like this can't? Like, literally, I'm not saying that as a criticism of your work. I'm saying, what what is it like? What 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 kind of magic sauce need to translate over so you use something like this? Uh, Jack, I don't think you need to dump stats before accessing it. Um, you might need to call finalize stats, but I think that's automatically handled. Um, I think you, I think there's a, yeah, I think you're right. I think there's like a finalized stats, but you don't need to dump. So but they are. Yeah. Bobby, like my number one thing, and, and I don't know if it's here or not, I don't think that it is, is I would love to have a single data structure where I can, or, or API, such that I can access the stats when I'm running my Gen 5 simulation and also after the fact, I would love to use the exact same code in the simulation and then for post-processing rather than have a completely different set of code for post-processing stats. I don't, but... Um... Like the API, I would love it to be the same. But it's, sorry, what, and what I don't really understand what, like what, 
what how is it not the same there's only one api here right it's like this api i don't I, I didn't... but i can't use this api outside of jump well so how can i develop code for outside of gen 5 in the gen 5 project i don't know what you're asking for well okay we can talk offline yeah, I, I I I want to. That's a requirement. I I believe that what Jason means is that, for example, if when you do like get sim start, maybe you can also pass um a, a trace file as an argument, and that might be, I guess that's maybe what he means by that. Uh, no, what I mean is like often what you do is you run a bunch of simulations and you output stats files, mm -hmm. and then you do a post processing step where you build graphs and. Oh wait, I I can actually we already have that. Uh, I haven't put it here, but uh, there's some uh, there's like git sim stat from JSON file, and you just leave that in, and it'll it will reconstruct what that sim stats structure would be that created that JSON file. Okay, that's the great. We should document that really well, um, because that's like you know the main way people use Gem Five is they run tons and tons of simulations, generate a lot of output files. And then post-process all those output files to create graphs for papers. So that's a really important use case that we should um, yeah. support. Well, I'll okay. I will. I will say. I'll say more of this. There is code there that claims it does that, but I did write it three years ago, so I'll double check. But yes, you can uh, theoretically in yeah take your output JSON and reload it again. Um, so I. So, I yeah. Go ahead. So you know, I want to say that I believe this is a very cool improvement, and honestly, I was not aware of it to the point that I think some colleague was actually asking whether it was possible to access stats from Python, and I basically said no because I was not aware of it. Um, so so I, yeah. So having said that, uh, I think like not like um, um, something like some extension to stats as of now, but I believe that the ability to actually query stats from Python might unlock. A new way of testing for us, like for example, when you're testing like um, uh, a single block, like a device or like a memory system, and basically we set expectation on our test, and the expectation are, for example, a specific value or like the number of he number of hits and number of misses. So I think this will simplify a lot and will allow us to make uh, 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 better testing. Um, but it's not related to the stats framework. But I think in general, I think we should start thinking about uh, testing using stats in this way. Um, uh, con consider to what we were doing like long time ago when it was just about like uh, comparing stats file and seeing whether, I mean, I think we're still doing it somehow, uh, comparing stats file and see if there are any differences. I think uh, this is much more powerful. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and yeah, I've hopefully, I hope that by the time next release comes out there's something a bit more mature and uh, yeah, but it has been here a while. And I think I think one of the reasons that the, the, it was sort of like semi beta, a semi beta release when I first did it, and I never really go back to it. But I think this should be a bit more mature and usable. And uh, yeah, it has you you can do you can do stuff like this and run tests inside the script, which is good. Another, I would just like to raise something that I heard at least a few times from the PhD students here at Davis is. Uh, and I still haven't got a very good solution to this, but it's, it's in cases like this where you've got multiple SIM objects across the system, but they all have these um, stats you need to somehow pass to a function to get to your uh, results. So a very naive example would be you've got like an eight core system. There should be a function to just average all the stats in the CPU, for example to get like average CPU stats very quickly. And you don't have to like out, cause right now they're taking this text file and just I don't know, grepping to find all the CPUs and manually kind of averaging everything out that they need to. Uh, another thing that I strongly agree with, but I don't have very good ideas on is kind of knowing what stats are there. Uh, like you have to know that there's a uh, system object inside simstat and there's a CPU inside that and that is a vector and that index zero there is a, a sim object and that has a stat called num instruct executed and that stat has a value that you can get that's all kind of it's hard to know when you're writing your script I don't I struggle to 
find a good solution to that. We do have these find functions. I think you do like find and then just do a passive string like num instructions executed and it will return I think all of the stats that hit on that uh, regex expression. But again, yeah. I, I don't know, for example, if someone says to me, I've got this script and I want to get the number of, number of instructions ex executed for my for core number one. I, I'd have to say that I have to say, well, it depends on your sim object structure. Uh, it depends on, you know, how oh, you set Bobby, up system. Yeah. Is this more than just a documentation problem? Like every single stat should have a description with it. And it also has a unit and these kinds of things. Can we just have a file that like automatically creates a nice HTML like thing of like, here's all your sim objects and here's all the stats for each one of them? Um, we, well, yeah, I mean, I guess you could like that information there is in that JSON file, right? Right. I mean, can, can we just create documentation based on that? Uh, sure. All the, sure. All the information is there. I don't know how, if there's any libraries out there that will like you can easily create this documentation from the data we have, but of course it's it's possible. Uh, yeah, I never really thought of that. It might be very helpful. Um, I guess for each stat we could, with with that you can actually for each stat you can give the like this is the command you run to access this stat inside the Python. You know, oh I like this uh, num instruction right. executed. Well, okay, it's system dot cpu dot two bar one dot num instruction executed. Okay, that's that's why we have this. These are powerful discussions. Um, okay, I'm happy to move on from this. I think I've got enough feedback, and no one's no no one's telling me that they will never ever use a JSON output or never ever use this, which is normally what happens. So when one talk. one question yeah. uh, from myself. Sure. Um, is this uh, this pie stats, the JSON stats you would get by modifying the stats output? So in a way, you don't generate the text file and you generate this JSON file? It's not modifying any of the existing stats code. Uh, this, uh, you'll still have, you can still have, and probably will, will probably still produce the text output. This actually, uh, this is, this is a completely separate thing. It doesn't interfere. Does that answer your question? Yeah, so in the past, there were multiple backends for stats. Is Would this be a new backend? Yeah, this is, I don't, yes, yeah, yeah. So oh, uh, uh, I, uh, I'm not sure what you mean by backend exactly. So in the thing. past, you could you could do text output, you could do HDF5, you could do other things. Okay. A long time ago. I don't know if it's still. Yeah, yeah. It's, this so is, my, my the question is whether this is, is, is uses that, yeah. So you have to do something like, I think to use it from the command line, you have to do something like uh, whatever output, but then JSON colon dash dash, and then your file name. And that's what it knows you want to output to the JSON format. Um, that functionality is still there. That's, I, I don't think that's exactly right. I mean, so yeah, the this interface is completely separate from the previous interface. The The old interface is still there. You no no I bet he I think what he's talking about is you can you have this um way of basically plugging in what stats output format you want in Gen five yes. and default the text output but you can have other things uh, that I can't remember what what, what they're inclusive of right yeah and was so, so, right. five yeah and we yeah, and so, I, so. Jason is one of those when I made this I put that I made that plugin that works with this okay so this could yeah but okay. but uh, uh, it, it importantly that doesn't use the same code path as the text okay. output and the HDF5 output. Oh, it's well. Completely different code path. Uh, well, I don't know how the text path, text uh, stats are generated, so I'll take your word for that. Uh, and my, my other question is, with this JSON, you can completely, uh, you can put any stat that today is in text into the JSON file, including histograms and other things. Uh, I think, I think by the time I finish with my PR, that will be the case. Uh, we weren't processing histograms before for some reason. I can't remember why I didn't put them in originally, but we've got that. Uh, yeah, we should be able to have all the output types. Um, 
Yeah. Okay. This is cool. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, and this is uh, just kind of point of the day where uh, point of the meeting where I have nothing left on my stack to talk about. Uh, is there anyone got anything I'll have to say? You're free to go back to discussion points we've had before if you suddenly thought of something or anything Gen 5 development related you want to bring in. Again, yeah, I don't mind leaving this uh, meeting. Adria, was there something we wanted to discuss about the vector extensions? I feel like there was, I saw something on an agenda that did not make it into the PowerPoint. Yeah, so there was the topic on uh, making it uh, be able to execute vector, exten uh, vector instructions as a coprocessor rather than tightly coupled with the current pipeline. Um, but I think this requires a lot of thought to start, even to start the discussion, because it completely it it will change a lot of things. So in my mind, if we if we go for a coprocessor, we would also have to decode elsewhere, and not on the decode stage of the current pipeline, at least for micro open. And so it it does change a lot of things. So I wanted to think first before discussing a lot. Okay. Um, that, that makes sense. I, I would encourage you to look at the way the um, GPU ISA is implemented. Like, I wonder if maybe we could um, kind of split the risk v ISA decode stuff into the scalar and vector, and then use the vector either with the scalar if you're doing a tightly integrated or use the vector decode separately if you're doing a uh, uh, coprocessor, if that makes sense. Yeah, in the coprocessor, I think you still need to decode the vector instruction, but then you don't have to micro up at that point, which will free a lot of resources from the scalar pipeline. And you just send the macro up into the coprocessor and it gets decoded there. Uh, but yeah, no, this this breaks the fundamental flow of how Gen Five works today. So I will take a look at the GPU stuff if it has something similar. Uh -huh. And then yeah, I don't know, but yeah, I, it might not be useful, but it it might be worth looking okay. at since that's an example of a coprocessor ISA. Yeah. So today I don't have resources to really work on this path. That's why, but I think that's what I I set in the issue. It's not a priority. But yeah, down the line, maybe we, we can kind of start thinking about this. And I don't know if it's really something that will have use. So maybe we should try to understand from the community whether this is going to be something useful or not. Well, I mean, I think that, you know, am I wrong that you all at Barcelona are looking at coprocessors for the vector stuff? Yes, yes. So yes, the right. designs we are aiming for are uh, coprocessors. Yeah. Um, and you're not the only one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know. So, but, so, um, so I do think that it's generally useful for the community. There are many things that we want to do first. Uh, so we are interested, but for example, the stale agnostic versus stale and this stuff is definitely something that needs to be done before because... Uh, so first, we want to get to a model which we can rely on, and we we still have a long to do. Uh, we are abstaining everything we do, so hopefully, um, so, we can not so. And then yeah. we we can look into this, uh, coprocessor versus tightly integrated. So while we're on this topic, um, do you all have any benchmarks or like pre-compiled? things in either SE mode or full system mode that you're commonly using to test? And would you be interested in contributing those to Gen5 resources so others can use them? Yeah. So we use the, the official RIS-5 instruction tests and also the for RBV for the vector, the, the RBV intrinsic tests, which, and uh, yeah, I mean, 
it could be good to to push them to to tests. In fact, we 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 have it locally. So for the oh. RPB intrinsic tests, it should be fairly easy to contribute, and and we can get onto that soonish probably. Wow, since you're here, do you know of it? Like, do we have any of the risk, the intrinsic tests or the um instruction test for RVV? Um, I don't think we have any for. I mean, we don't have any intrinsic results. Uh, okay, yeah, that would be really great if we could get those engine five resources, um, yes. and start testing them. What about benchmarks, though? Or are you uh, do you have things that uh, could be shared? Yeah, I don't know about benchmarks. I mean, we are looking at very basic benchmarks at the moment. Uh, we have four or five. And uh, that's why I'm saying that it's still a, a long path to looking into coprocessors versus style integrated because we're seeing things that uh, we want to fix in terms of performance for. I mean, we have things like JMS, PMB, Stream, uh, some stencil workloads, these, these things. And uh, those would be yeah. great to contribute, e even those simple things, so that we can start, you know, um, kind of collaborating on trying to improve the performance around certain mm -hmm. things. I definitely don't like, you know, getting Parsec or something like that running is um, much further off. But ha having some simple things that everyone can say, yes, we're running the same thing. I made this change and it improved the performance by this amount, or I made this change and it improved the performance this way, would really help in collaboration. Okay, we can we can look into that. But then this this could definitely not be test material. This this take this take a long time to. Right, it would be um, yeah benchmarks more res resources, let's say yeah. Right, right, right. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So yeah, like yeah. engine five resources, we have things like um, you know, things from simple matrix multiply applications to NAS parallel benchmarks to Parsec mm -hmm. and others. And it would be great if we could be collaborating on that as well. Okay. The tests that I mentioned before, I think this is this can be quick. And the benchmarks I will have to first uh, run it internally and then see where we are with that. But yeah, I think it won't be an issue. Cool. Okay. Uh, yeah. Does that have anything yeah. else? Yes, actually, just uh, one quick point. So I don't know if you are aware, we recently merged um, a generic um, cache model um, uh, from Pranith, uh, and it's now merged on develop. So uh, I don't know if you follow the pull request, like basically like a first attempt and it's basically creating this generic cache that works with the address and there was some comments from andreas about making it even more generic to be able to use uh, as a key for like lookups um, not only the address but uh, any sort of uh, data structure and um, but we merged it uh, as it is now and i would like to have the sort of interface stable before 24.0 um, because of course it touches several parts of the code and I wouldn't want to basically change the APIs uh, too much. So I would like to basically use the time until 24.0 uh, to basically try to come up with a more general interface uh, so that we can actually reuse the same code in multiple parts. So um, at the moment uh, it's mainly used for um, uh, prefetchers and other caches, but I think it's missing a bit of generality to be able to use them, for example, for TLBs and some other caches. So it would be great if you could actually make these changes before it actually goes into stable. So basically, users don't have to update uh, their code because the API have changed between 24.0 and 24.1. So I would say two things to that. First of all, yes, absolutely do it. Um, maybe make a small issue just explaining what you're doing so we can tag this in the milestone thing that Jason just made. So we so we remind ourselves this is waiting in. If worst does come to worst and you can't get this change in, I think feel free to revert the current change 
and then maybe you just bundle it with your changes for the next release, the version 24.1 or whatever. Uh, if you're worried about an awkward release that only goes halfway that people shouldn't maybe get used to. Uh, I mean, it's up to you. That'll just be my suggestion. Mm -hmm. getting, getting no, I, I think it's fine. I mean, as of now, uh, it, it can still be used uh, in, in several locations. It's just that I think it will, because there, I don't know how much how much time, like when it's supposed to happen. I think I missed this part. Oh, uh, we're creating browsers the middle of May, May 14th. Middle of May, okay. Well, we got mm -hmm. about a month before, yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean, I might be able to write something and maybe I might ask for some help in case I see that uh, I don't have enough bandwidth. Sure, that's great. That's what you like to hear. Uh, yeah, and we'll shepherd it in within reason. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll say I'm, I, I'm super into the idea of a generic cache library. Uh, I like the direction that it's going. Um, it would be great if we could get it to a good state before we make a new release. Thanks, Giacomo. No worries. Okay. Does everyone have anything else they want to discuss? Okay. Uh, that's quarter to a quarter to ten. Uh, use three quarters of our time. Uh, do you have something? Yeah. Wait. Someone has something. To say. I had some uh, some yeah. comments, but you know I, I can take them offline as well. But they were more around uh, maybe structuring some use case based examples. So over the past couple of months, as we were ramping up uh, from now this from a user perspective, you know we had to watch a bunch of videos and download a bunch of uh, GitHub code from the various uh, boot camps and tutorials, and then read some papers to piece together like, uh, uh, you know, L3 cache studies or GPU, actually we're discussing GPU, but it seems, uh, you know, the, the users may benefit from uh, like a structured, you know, use case, like, oh, you're trying to do this, you know, here's a, a kind of example, get started uh, quick type thing. But that's just a suggestion. I can uh, maybe put down some of those thoughts and structure them a little bit better. I wasn't prepared today, but that was just my initial I suppose if you want to get it, if you want to this plan, it's fine. I suppose my my follow question would be like, great, can you tell us what these specific use cases are? And if they're general enough, sure, like worth worthwhile. Uh, okay. Well, that would really actually probably help us create our boot camp materials this summer because we're looking for things like that that uh, are good are good enough for creating. Yeah. You know. uh, I think the problem would be a lot of new users to Gen 5 Hub is you inevitably are trying to do something really, really specific with Gen 5, and we can't make tutorials that are necessarily for that level of specificity. Uh, but sure, if you've got things that you think are very like general that uh, you think, and we can make a tutorial on that. Uh, um, yeah, I, I can send in some specific uh, examples. Uh, you know, I, I work in the CXL area a lot and then uh, also emerging memories. So like those are two general purpose uh, areas. And the third one from AI is uh, uh, distributed accelerators. So I think these are like, if I was to put down like three general purpose use cases that uh, people might be looking for, uh, it would be these, these three, which is uh, tiered memory, uh, so second is uh, accelerators, uh, disaggregated accelerators. Uh, and then the third one would be uh, emerging uh, memory technologies. And uh, Jason just put something in the chat there. So there's Gen5 discussions. Uh, it's, it's on our GitHub. This would be a great discussion to open up and just say, these are things I think that would be a benefit to have kind of tutorials on based on my experience. Uh, it's hard to build up to there from from the materials available. I mean, we can get that discussion going. Um, absolutely. Yeah, I was just thinking, how do we democratize access to Gem Five? Because so in our team, you know, we have folks who are new software developers. They're probably probably not senior computer architects, but so and it's it's more about like. Uh, uh, you know, lowering the barrier for people to to use uh, Gem Five. That that was kind of the high level spirit. So yeah, I'm I'm all for that, and uh, hopefully we can get some good materials out if uh, 
you can get our creative juices flowing on how to kind of structure this. Sure, I uh, just kind of communicate it. We're gonna build the open project. You're free to open a, open a, a like discussion and just say, I think this is worth looking into and we can work from there. Okay. Uh, also, you said a way as I say, if, you, if you've developed anything that's like, here's the steps you need to do to do X, Y, Z, you know, we can put that on the website. Uh, the website is also open source, so we can add anything that you want to the website. Okay, no, that that's great. And and you said just put it on, like, put the suggestions up on the GitHub, or maybe uh, if you can. So, put... so if you look into the chat right now, this is gonna Jason provide a link to Gen Five Discussions GitHub. It's just basically a forum, uh, where you can post and say, "Hey, I think this would be a good idea," and people will tell you whether it's a good idea or not. Uh, mm -hmm. So, um. We also have mailing lists, but I think that's probably the easiest to access immediately and get and get and talk. Um okay. Uh anyone got anything else to say? No, thanks. It was great to yeah, meet. Yeah. Yeah. Just because every single time I feel like I'm about to wrap up, there's a kind of question, which I'm not against. I'm just okay. Dare I say, I think this is the end of meeting. And uh, yeah, I hope you all have a good rest of your day. Again, it's the second Thursday of every month, so the second Thursday of uh, May, uh, which probably be very close to the staging branch uh, release anyway. Uh, we'll have another Gen 5 developer meeting, roughly the same format, and I hope to see you then. And this recording will be out in the next couple of days. Okay. Thanks, Zoe. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, everyone.